Good morning, everybody. I'd like to welcome Dr. Morris for Student Engagement Doesn't Have to Suck with XR Village. What's going on? Y'all better wake up. I'm that professor. Hi, I'm Dr. Messina Morris, Molder of Minds. My students at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia call me Dr. Mom. They won't let it go. So I told them it had to stand for something. And so I am the Molder of Minds. And I am here to talk to you all about how student engagement doesn't have to suck. Why? I know it. I was a biomolecular chemistry PhD student who had teachers that talked to me like this. Today we're going to be... Did y'all just learn some chemistry? Oh, you didn't. Okay, so I had to go teach myself. And so I became a professor to make chemistry more accessible for more people because we need more people to see molecules like me, right? Okay, so student engagement doesn't have to suck. I'm Dr. Messina Morris. You can find me at Unite the Metaverse, and I have an assignment for you, and I know some of you all want to do it, and some of you all don't, so I have two different options. Here's a QR code, okay? If you want to stay linked in with me, because sometimes after a talk goes, you want to talk to the people, but you can't because they're flying off to another event. So go ahead and get this, and I can stay in contact with you. This is the QR code, and then... I'll give you, uh, and then if you want to just follow me, you go to my website and then put that I met you at DEF CON at UniteTheMetaverse.com in the contact submission, however you want to do it. Those are your two options. Go to my website or get this QR code and put your information in. I'll put you on my serve because I am training a thousand educators and a thousand student creators to do what I do. Okay. I think all of my students are ready. So let's go. All right. So why AITAs? So people might say, why would you put AI teaching assistants in schools? Because they're gonna get rid of teachers. Well, let me just help you understand as an educator, the capacity. It's not even as many students as I typically have in one period in this particular classroom. In a lecture hall, there's usually hundreds of students in chemistry. And so when there are hundreds of students and you have no teaching assistant or you might have one or maybe two that are also graduate students that are matriculating through their graduate experience, they don't have time to get to all of the student questions and you just don't have enough time in a day. So I have given my cell phone number out since 2009 to students saying, please just contact me if you need anything, creating accessibility. Well, historically, when they used AI-powered teaching assistants, they were just chatbots. And so why are we using this now? They're 3D, they're spatial, and they're in unique environments, okay? But it's gonna help us enhance efficiency and reduce administrative burden. It's gonna help us personalize learning and student support, and then improve access to information, because I'm a chemist that wants to do that, and then enhance classroom interaction. So when you think about the future of what classrooms are, you might think that the classrooms actually look like what you're seeing on, they don't. They still look like whatever it looked like when you were in school, okay? It has not evolved, education has not evolved. But even still in the world, we're in the age of the intelligent classroom where we should, where AI technology and educational pedagogy are going to intersect. And so I coined the term metaversive teaching and learning when I created the Metaversity at Morehouse College so that people could understand that there's a pedagogical approach to making virtual reality the classroom and doing it effectively, as well as using AI-powered teaching assistance. All of the technologies that undergird what is going to be the metaverse or what will be the next iteration of the web as we go into this fourth industrial revolution, it's really important that our students are understanding at the college level what the new future of work looks like. There is a disconnect. So a lot of the issues that I have or a lot of my professors have with me even doing this is, what do y'all think? Let me, let me hear from the audience. What do you think the teachers th are saying about this? What are educators saying about AI-powered teaching assistants? Go. 
We're not ready for that. Crazy is never going to work. What else? It's not personal enough. That's the one. Well, anybody else? We're going to replace human beings, right? Yes. Say it again. Cheating. Cheating. Well, guess what? They're going to do it anyway. What else? If, if you're going to cheat life, you're going to do it anyway. Okay? So the biggest thing is we are trying to engage students to learn and comb through information. And we are in the age of what I call the connected student. Students who literally have been scrolling, were born into this technology, don't know quite how to use it, don't ethically know how to use it, didn't see the evolution of it, but it's here. And so they use it however they feel like it. And since there is really no safe guardrails on it, teachers are afraid of what could be. So I created this platform along with my educational partners, Victory XR, to make sure that we had a tool that teachers could use so that they wouldn't say, oh, we're going to erase human beings out of the classroom because literally human intelligence created artificial intelligence. And I know all of you all in the room know this, but for some reason it didn't trickle down to education, okay? So we are building an emotionally intelligent conversational AI TA model. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. I'm going to do a demo of it, but give me, let me get through just the meat of this conversation because I want you to see it in order to, to understand it. Okay. But who remembers homework helpline is just me. Homework hotline, call, okay, for help, just me. Okay, we failed y'all, the rest of y'all in here. We should have had homework helpline for you. But anyway, you used to be able to pick up your phone and call for help. Uh-oh. See, it's not going it's not going to act right. Come on, Canva, don't act wrong. Okay, don't worry about it. It's not going to my thing. Okay. So AI is a new TA, and if you remember Homework Helpline, then you remember that it was access to information 24-7. If your students came home from school, they could call up somebody and get help. Now, what the thing about Homework Helpline is there used to be a teacher on the other line, and there used to be a teacher sitting there with all their books behind them trying to figure out what the heck your homework talking about which is also hard, and that's the problem with tutoring in general, is that you don't know where the learning losses are for students. You don't know where the gaps in understanding are, but in the back end of our interface of this AI teaching assistant, this kind of like homework helpline, we actually do have formative assessments so I can track and see, and I can see the transcript of all my students on the back end, and it's closed off to go into my lessons first and all of the resources that I put up there, open educational resources that I have put together and cultivated over years of my, my craft. And it's going to go there and lead them and guide them through scripted lessons that I've created. So now there'll be, it's going to force them to go through the resources that I've created first and then go back. And it also then detracts them. So like if they get, off the topic and just say, hey, well, I want to know how do you make blue earrings? And it's a chemistry class. It's going to say, hmm, the color blue is going to think for a while and it'll probably come back with something like, well, the color blue is a reflection of blah, 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 blah. But we're talking about chemistry and the lesson is about atomic number. So let's shift back and it's going to do that for students, which is a great way to redirect them. Students can also interrupt and answer questions and ask questions in the middle and it recognizes different dialects as well as languages so how do i think i can do this so somebody said we're not ready for it somebody said we can't do it it's going to fail but i have already proved a model will work in the hardest time possible during a pandemic in the spring of 2021 i launched morehouse in the metaverse along with three other professors of mine in English, history, and biology. And I'm the only chemist, and I'm launching in advanced and organic chemistry. Okay? There was no chemistry content at all. No 3D spatial assets, hardly anything. So all of the, what I was creating was created along with software developers, along with everybody. And I had to learn how to use my techies across 
to be more interdisciplinary than I've ever been, to be more cross-disciplinary than ever. So I can proudly tell you all that since spring of 2021, we have taught 44 courses fully in virtual reality. We have over 550 headsets at Morehouse College in Atlanta, Georgia. It's a historically black college and university that educates young black men to be leaders in their community. Okay, so I am so excited. We have seen outcomes of up to 11.9% increase in student achievement. We also saw that our students came to class more and we increased attendance rates by 10 percentage points. Students come to class more when they have access to technology that engages them, okay? So we saw this, we've published it in peer-reviewed journals and this is the next best step. The next step is to increase the number of student interactions and engagement, the length of their interactions. And we can, this is available on the Chrome browser, the AITAs, they don't have to have a headset. We have 2,200 Morehouse students and not everybody has a headset. Well, I'm doing my best to fundraise to get us headsets. But in the meanwhile, educational institutions have a friction point when it comes to the technology. And so putting it on a Chrome browser for interaction and the help allows teachers to one, be able to create easily and also students to be able to access content easily too. Um, but what we're looking for is are we increasing the number of engagements or interactions that students are having? Are they maintaining these interactions? And then are their grades actually increasing? And do they see a future in their, their careers that can be pegged out using this technology? Because all career pathways now are going to have to be tech adjacent, every single one of them. There is no such thing as an English professor that does not use technology. There is no such thing now as a journalist or a humanities professor or anybody in any other field that doesn't use tech. That, those, that ship has sailed, but I think everyone in this room knows that. So I'm gonna bust some myths real quick about AI and AITA. So some of the things that you all said, AI will replace teachers. No, it will augment the classroom because we don't really have capacity. And imagine having to serve, at, even all of you all in this room and all of the questions that you all may have had individually and give you all a personalized experience. And I have to do that in 50 minutes. And I have to teach you complex information. And I only get to see you two to three times a week. That's a huge responsibility and task to put on just the teacher. And while I know that I am gifted, if I could put it in their heads, I would do it. But I need something for students to be able to access when it's 3 a.m. and they're studying. Dr. Moore's cell phone is on silent. I'm getting rest so I can serve them in the morning. But you know how it is in college. They went out before they studied and they got a test in the morning. So it's 3 a.m. And the question is, I don't know how to find mass number, but Dr. Morris has a lesson on mass number straight from the content directly to the key standards that we want to hit. I'm gonna go run that playback and then I'm gonna ask it the question. And now I ain't gotta go filter through Google. I ain't gotta go filtering through, I ain't gotta go figuring out, oh Lord, like what, I can go directly to a resource and use it and I didn't have to log into 3,460 interfaces to get there. So we're not replacing teachers, we're increasing the capacity of teachers for students who need more personalized instruction. We're also implementing AI because, oh, it says implementing AI requires extensive technical expertise. Um, not so much. What it does require is grit. So the teacher dash dashboard is as user friendly as any social media platform, but people still think you teachers have to code. I'm not asking you to take on another task. I'm not asking you to pick up another craft. I'm asking you to just know how to help students, right? Okay, so AI is detrimental to students learning and encourages cheating. Somebody over here said that, right? Well, you teach students how to use it appropriately. You teach them how to use AI appropriately by introducing it to them and showing them the right workflow. 
So that is how you do it. Um, AI-driven education is for older students. Lifelong learning is very necessary, but what we really need to do is integrate this education at the small, at the youngest levels with Generation Alpha, right? We need these young babies to really understand the evolution and take part in the creation. They have wonderful, amazing ideas. We participated in XPRIZE Connect over this past spring with my college students, but it's usually for our high school students to, and, and these students are just fabulous at coming up and constructing ideas. So when you, early, when you integrate it early, you can demystify the technology. AI in schools compromises privacy and security, and I know that is a huge thing for people, but our, the, the platform that we use, even though it does access AI, open AI, we have it carded off and there are parameters set so that our information does not flow back to them. So you all understand that, but in this digital age, we have taken all precautions to make sure that privacy and security are paramount. We have to we have the same platform as any learning management system would. So students have used these learning management systems and they follow FERPA laws, federal laws to pre protect students' privacy and security. And we've done it with our Metaversity. So I'm pretty confident that we can do it and do our best job first in this pilot this fall. And so these are the hypothesized outcomes. We hope to improve academic performance, obviously, to engage students more and to create higher levels of in motivation for them. Better retention rates. So we have a huge problem with stopouts in terms of education. For young black males, they run out of money, they run out of funding, they run out of time, whatever. They have other pressing issues that happen in their lives. And life happens to all of us, right? So that's what's happening. And so students stop out. And so we want to make sure that we are giving them continuous support and personalized learning experience that can be accessed anywhere. And then enhance their skill development because they need these four C's. They need collaboration, creativity, um, critical thinking skills, and communication. They need these interactions and they need them with AI tools. So the Department of Education will be using them to train pre-service teachers at Morehouse, the History Department, Sociology, our Student Success Center in areas of math, physics, and foreign language, and we will be doing peer-to-peer -peer tutoring support and study group support as well. I'm also training a thousand educators and a thousand student creators to use our tool and create their own lessons, and it doesn't matter what it's about, and it's going to be like a teachers pay teachers model for them, so they'll be incentivized to create on the in this space but what we really want to know is will students ask more questions you know there's a student that sits in a in, in the classroom for an entire year and they'll never ask a question and they'll never ask the question because they feel like their question doesn't matter that the person right next to them isn't thinking the exact same thing that they are thinking and that's not true but they will ask it to these AITAs because they can ask it anything. And it gives them that privacy, safety, and security to ask those questions that will then get them back to the answer that they need and close those learning gaps. So my predicted effect is that student engagement will definitely increase and students don't have to come to the professor to be retaught a lesson if they miss for whatever reason. I have a whole lot of peer-reviewed journals, and this is for the people that just really want peer-reviewed journals, find me and I'll send it to you. But I thank you. My image won't pop up. I don't know why. Oh, the girl with the connection left. I was connected to somebody's Wi-Fi and they walked out. Ah, that's hilarious. So you can stay connected with me, Dr. Morris. I guess my, my QR code will not show up there, but that's fine. Um, what I want to show you, though, let me see if I can... I don't have a Wi-Fi connection. That is hilarious. I just realized that. At least I got to the end of my talk. So you can stay connected with me at UniteTheMetaverse.com. I had a real cute picture to show y'all to say thank you. I was standing like a superhero. So anyway, um, I really wish that you all could see the demo, but for whatever reason, I don't have Wi-Fi connection now. <laughs> in the middle of the talk. So thank you so much for your attentiveness and I will leave more room for questions if anybody wants to ask me any questions, but you can find me at UniteTheMetaverse.com and I am Dr. Messina Morris or Dr. Mom, Molder of Minds, first Metaversity director in the world, first to introduce these type of spatial 3D AI customizable TAs. 
happy to do it, working in conjunction with multiple partners in tech and EdTech partners, Victory XR, to do it at Morehouse College. So thank you. Any questions? Everybody raise your hand. There's no dumb questions here. Yes. Yes. Okay, so network abil ability to handle it on the network, is that what you asked me? Oh, IT support, just IT support. Okay, so I'm my IT support. It is challenging. The blessing in this is that I'm married to a network design engineer. So I kind of had a cheat code with me. Um, he's my husband and I would be like, what do we do? So, um, but I do say this, you always have an ally in a space. I always walk over to IT because I did get one person to really help me and help me figure out the network and help me figure out the firewalls and help me figure out everything. And some institutions like medical schools, graduate schools that have um, information that, that they keep in databases definitely have to have a separate network for connecting for this. So we got, we got another separate connection for network devices just so that students can get on devices. I also have a partnership with T-Mobile. So I got a lot of hot spots and I won their Unconventional Innovation of the Year Award. So that too, allies. allies. <laughs> You're welcome. Anybody else? There's no dumb question here. Do, 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 do. Yes. Uh-oh. All right, so his question is, when should you ask AI for, when should you ask AI a question or when should you ask a teacher the question? I think that you should always, always ask your instructor. But let me tell you something, human beings don't know everything. And what we're gonna do is go do the same thing that you're gonna do, but with more trained expert eyes. I'm gonna go comb through all of the resources that I know to comb through, and I'm gonna go reteach myself things that I forgot long ago. And then I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna teach you. That's how it goes. So when do you ask your teacher a question? I think that you should always go to your instructor first. But if you're in a bind and you don't have the answers and you need to access information, Use your resources. This is a resource. So ask it any question. Ask it what to wear for class. I don't care what you ask it, but ask it questions because that's what it's there for. And you will learn how to close your own learning gaps and ask relevant questions to get you to what answer you need to understand. And that's what we're trying to measure is do students begin to ask questions also more effectively? because they're asking more questions. They're not just, at, you know, there's a difference between a question that, that gets you the answer that you're looking for and a question that doesn't. So thank you so much. I appreciate that. Thank you for your time and for listening so attentively. All of y'all get a gold star. I'm gonna come back to you in the back because they've given me the red flag. All right, take care. Find me, unitethemurderverse.com. <laughs>